In the 1920s, Americans were, well, you could say, drunk. In the 1920s, the Great Depression was going on, so the government decided to stop selling liquor. They were thinking that the crime would go down, as bootleggers and gangs took over, as Al Capone was the notorious gang leader, and the crime was at all high in the 1920s. <laughs> Nearly 100 years later, the craft beer industry hit the market. I thought, you know, there's one way we might be able to make it work. There's one thing we've got that they don't have. And they might have more money than us, and they maybe know more people than we do. But we've got Surly Nation. May 5th, 2011, Mark Dayton signed the Shirley Bill to let craft beer owners sell their beer at their breweries. Hey, I'm Eric. I'm the uh, Minnesota sales guy for uh, Milwaukee Brewing Company, uh, MKE. Uh, what do you like the most about craft beer? Uh, I love uh, that craft beer is absolutely tasty. I enjoy it. Uh, it's just something different. Uh, it's been a big part of my life for a long time now. So, yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah, so my name is Dan Parker I'm with the Brooklyn Brewery. Uh, we also are with uh, 21st Amendment Funk Works out here at the Beer Dabbler today. So I actually come from a chef background, uh, so I got into beer specifically because of flavor. Um, you know, the way that beer interacts with food, the amount of different flavors that we have, the different profiles, um, it really opens up a whole lot as far as pairing goes. Everybody's familiar with wine and food pairing, but beer is actually a way better component, uh, a partner to, to food, so that's where I kind of got into craft beer. Um, so yeah, just the, the huge array of flavors that we have at our disposal. Alright, All right, Brian Mills here with uh, Deschutes Brewery out of Bend, Oregon. Uh, my favorite part about craft beer is the endless variety and always being able to find, discover new things. Since the Shirley Bill has been passed, Minnesota is ranked 14th in the nation in the craft beer industry. It has created 667 jobs directly with the craft beer. It also has created 24,000 jobs worth in the wholesale or retail jobs in the craft beer industry. Uh, Nick Barth with Beaver Island Brewing Company, one of the co-founders here of Beaver Island Brewing Company in St. Cloud, Minnesota, just two blocks away from the River's Edge Convention Center. This is actually our fourth uh, St. Cloud Craft Beer Tour. We did our debut, our world debut here four years ago. So every year for the St. Cloud Craft Beer Tour, we do a different beer this year. It's Revolution 4, which is a cherry doppeldunkel. And it's really exciting to see not only this event grow, but see our brewery grow in tandem. Um, there's been a lot of opportunity for us each year to evolve our brand and to see the Craft Beer Tour grow has been something special because this is our hometown, this is our backyard. Um, when we were presented with the opportunity to become a larger player, we were really excited because if it's going to happen in St. Cloud, we want it to happen with us. Uh, so again, this is our town and we're very proud of the St. Cloud Craft Beer Tour. And in the last few years, we've been honored with the best of show. And we're hopeful for today, but if it doesn't happen, that's all right too, because at the end of the day, we're all winners in the opportunity to be a part of the St. Cloud Craft Beer Tour and the craft beer uh, industry in general. There have been a lot of ups and downs in the last uh, 10 years, but I think the craft beer industry in general has been a bonded, well put together industry. It comprised of a lot of people who want the same result. We want to see craft beer be the number one consumed beverage and everything else is second to that. So, cheers. Um, how do you feel about the craft beer industry? I mean, craft beer is fantastic. You know, I discovered craft beer myself probably you know, almost 20 years ago at O'Hara's Brew Pub. Um, that was my, my toehold in the craft beer. Um, one of the really fun things about Pantown Brewing is that we actually have the original O'Hara's equipment and that's what we're brewing on. So for me it kind of brings craft beer full circle and it, it's fun to be able to, to say that that's the equipment that we're using on that. Where I discovered craft beer, now we're moving forward in the craft beer and trying new things and really pushing the limits on what we can do. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. I moved from uh, Southern California here to open this with my brother, Tim Jones, and um, so we were just, you know, surrounded by craft breweries and, and, and uh, places opening up all the time and just like, inundated, overwhelmed with it in California. Uh, when we came here, we just saw how much it's growing and the community that the uh, local breweries have, even the ones that have been here for a little while, along with the ones that have opened up since we've opened up. 
just help each other out and stuff. So it's wonderful to be a part of that community and uh, just to see the, the growth and stuff of a whole uh, state getting into uh, the whole beer community and craft brewing and stuff as opposed to coming from California where it was already just so saturated. Stuff's good. Always coming out with new stuff, always experimenting, uh, coming out with uh, new things to keep people interested in coming back to the tavern. Beer industry's good. Solid. So we all worry about bubbles because we've all been alive in the last 10 years. I still think that there's plenty of market share to go around right now as far as if people are embracing small, independent breweries. We're starting it to get back to that point pre-prohibition. Um, and a lot of that had to do with logistics and, and refrigeration and all that stuff. But to where every town had their own, sometimes a few, breweries. They had the, you know, um, and then you combine that with the fact that we can all travel a lot farther. I think it's wonderful. Because great beer alone, which is a good thing, just doesn't cut it. You know, <laughs> so, but I like to see everybody stepping up their game and actually making good quality beer. You know, where it's not just good beer alone that just sets you apart from everybody else. Because that doesn't say a lot about everybody else. Right now, we have a lot of great people making a lot of great beer. And I don't care who you are, that's awesome. Cat Beer Boom in Minnesota also has helped festivals and underground music in Minnesota grow. This is one of like the primary events in our year. Like we try to get this on schedule every time that we can and, and perform here. Um, it's really a blending of all things that are amazing, right? You have craft beer, you have good music, and you have a fundraising event for like a community-based organization, um, which their whole focus is about giving back. So, you know, what what's not to like about that? You know? Hey, I'm Robert Kasich, uh, one of the owners and co-founders of 612 Brew. I'm Jeremy Jones from Iyer Brewing Company. Hi, Marty Jack, Pantown Brewing. You know, 612, like I said before, the, the, the name is synonymous with Minneapolis. Um, we were one of the first production breweries in, um, in Minneapolis, um, one of the first tap rooms in Minneapolis, too. Um, you know, so starting that, um, that upward trend of Minneapolis and the brewing scene um, comes with a lot of great responsibility, responsibility as well. You know, we work with uh, local charities. Um, we work with uh, the community to to give back. We uh, every Wednesday we have a program here in the tap room where we give proceeds back to a local charity. Um, we work with Inside Neighborhood Services to do uh, some some give back programs for our 612 group. And we also try and get our our tap room. In it too. So not only the employees of 612, but also the guests and our uh, our patrons and our regulars can come through and be a part of our give back program where we have initiatives to uh, work with the local local community to, to help give our time and give our dollars back. Well, the Pantone idea that was Noel's idea. Um, he had that paperwork and everything filed long before he even talked to me and. Uh, we had a lot of discussions about whether that was the way to move forward or not, but based on our location, the part of town that we're in, and the, the fun connection to St. Cloud history, it was just a kind of a no-brainer in the end to do it. We say no-brainer, we talked about it, but um, in the end it came full circle and it was really fun to do that. And I didn't know a ton when we started this, but I, I kind of took it on myself to go to the Stearns County History Museum and uh, research there, go through the exhibit, and then sit down in the, uh, the research wing and talk to the, the researchers in there. I can't believe the amount of information that's available out there. People don't, don't even know what was going on in St. Cloud in 1917 you know, through 1919. There's a real good chance that we could have been a major automobile manufacturer and it, it didn't work out, but you know, it's fun to kind of go through the history and see what was there and where it could have gone. And uh, Sam Pandolfo, the, the founder of the Pan Motor Company, was way ahead of his time. He was a major innovator. And so to be able to have that connection to a automobile innovator and, and, and try and, and do that as a brewery, maybe be a brewery innovator, is, is kind of fun. We hope that uh, we can live up to that legacy. Hey guys, it's Desi, and we're standing in front of our St. Cloud Craft Beer Tour booth, representing for the Hop Shop. 
uh, homebrew and wine supply store up here in St. Cloud, Minnesota. There's two ways of making your own beer on the homebrew level. You can either start with an extract kit, which is basically a pre-made wort that you just have to reconstitute with water, or you can do it from the grain. So you just take malted barley, um, they steep that in hot water, and then after about an hour, we'll boil that liquid, add some hops to it, any other flavors you want to add, cool it down, drop it in the fermenter, pitch uh, the appropriate yeast for the style you want to make, and usually seven to 10 days later, you've got a really nice beer. Um, you either have to bottle it at that point in time and then wait another two weeks for it to be carbonated, or you can do it like uh, I like to and put it in a keg, um, force carbonate it, and be drinking it in a couple of days. So what's the number one thing that people do wrong in making their own beer? The number one thing people do wrong? Yeah. Man, I'd say probably their mash temperatures are one of the biggest things that people will do wrong. They might either mash a little too hot or too cold. Um, and then the other thing that's the most important thing to not do wrong is sanitation. So if you shortcut anything, um, sanitation is the one thing you don't want to shortcut. So some people will do that. They get a little infection in their beer and then they have an off All right, so how do you feel about the craft beer industry? Um, right now, the craft beer industry is actually in a really, I think it's in a great place for home brewers. Um, and it's in a fantastic place for small tap rooms. Um, my personal opinion right now, package market is getting a little bit saturated. You got a lot of options in the liquor store. Um, but in all the small craft breweries, the smaller systems, they're doing great. We're getting more of them opening up every day. And those guys are actually making quite a bit of money um, off those little tap rooms. And I think we're going to see more of those coming along. Okay. Go. Great. Three, two, one. Hey, I'm Eric from Mighty Axe Hops. We're here at the St. Cloud Craft Beer Tour for the first time. And we're here because we're your local hop farmer. We grow just up the road in Foley. We supply a ton of the breweries that are here. Hope you have a great day. How, how and why hops? What, where'd you start? So hops are, the main, hops are the main ingredient in beer. They're the most sexy ingredient in beer. And we started five years ago, just a couple acres. And now we grow 80. We're the largest hop farm from Michigan to Idaho. We're super lucky here in Minnesota to actually live in a state where we can grow hops. They don't grow too far south. So we're lucky as a craft beer community that we even can have local hops. Yeah, well I think 2019 is going to be a big year for Minnesota craft. I think we continue to see a lot of openings. Probably smaller breweries, not huge production uh, breweries. But more and more it's going to be about brewers telling us why they're different on that shelf. If you walk in any liquor store, there's a million local IPAs. Why do you care about that one or that one? And we think that local and the story of using local hops will really speak to consumers. Okay, cool. Thanks again. Nice to meet you.